He is the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. He's Kevin O'Connell. He's back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Coach? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Appreciate you having me on. You bet. So uh, where are we? We got one more week left, OTAs. Is that what we got going on right now? Yeah, one more. We'll uh, we'll have three or four good days of work this week and then uh, give these guys a, uh, a much-needed break. We've had a really good offseason, Rich. You know, really, really uh, almost, you know, almost 100% attendance across the board. Got Justin's deal done. Um, got him back with the guys this past, this past week and – uh, really starts to feel like we can envision kind of what this team's going to really look like and really excited about this team, excited about our roster that Quasi and his staff have put together. And, uh, you know, our job is to make sure we coach them up and make sure in all three phases we're ready to go play winning football. Let's talk about Justin's deal. Um, listen, I'm not telling any tales out of school. Head coach is usually a bunch of control freaks, and you're a head coach. And you can't yep. control that. That is the ultimate uncontrollable is what's going on between front office and player uh, of generational talent for a contract. So where were you when you heard it was finally got done, Kevin? You know, I was actually uh, sitting at this very desk ah. and, and, and knew it was close. Um, knew we were, uh, you know, when, you know, when the deals like that get tend to get announced and all those things, um, we kind of, we were working our way towards the finish line earlier the previous week and, um, really had a good feeling that it would get done and we would have Justin for mini camp. And um, once it started to look like that, uh, you know, I was smiling ear to ear, man. Just love having him around, love having him around our team and our building. Uh, meant what I said, you know, the day we uh, officially got it done. But he really is a, a building changer. He's a culture changer and, and he happens to be uh, the best player at his position in football and 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 just somebody who means the absolute world to me. I'm happy for Justin and his family, so well-deserved, and um, gives me great joy to know he's going to be a Viking uh, at least for the next five years. No doubt. A lot than that. No doubt. Who told you? Did somebody walk in the room? Like, uh, do you want to reenact it? I don't know if you're an actor, Kevin. I mean, like, what 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 happened in that chair? Yeah, you know, Kwesi, uh, our GM, and, and Rob Brzezinski, who was heavily involved, you know, he handles our contracts and does a great job with our – salary cap you know they kind of walked in together with smiles on their faces nice. um and i knew um and then i immediately uh immediately started uh you know texting uh any uh, any memes and gifts i could find on my phone to justin to let him know the excitement uh you know that's how you communicate with these guys nowadays so what'd you use what'd you use what'd you, what'd you, what'd you text what'd... a heartfelt you know message he's going to read about four four words of it and move on to the next but he can visually see <laughs> You know, <laughs> I may or may not have picked the, uh, you know, the uh, the old M Microsoft uh, Bill Gates and company dancing on the stage. Oh, uh, that's good good one. Ballmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an old reliable for somebody who doesn't dance particularly well myself. I was about to reenact that and then I realized it would not look good for me. So I'm not going to do that dance. My God, there was the there was, was might have been an overbite involved. You know, I mean. <laughs> But that's funny. That is funny, and 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 obviously to the point uh, of how good he is. Certainly, when you uh, have a young quarterback on your roster who's going to eventually take over the reins of your franchise, and you knew I'd eventually bring this conversation to my guy, uh, the if you will other JJ that you have, and JJ McCarthy. Uh, I noticed he wasn't taking any first team snaps. What what are you um, executing for your plan with him right now? Yeah, he's uh, he's had a great spring. He's off to a, a really good start, you know, transitioning into a new offense, a bunch of new teammates, new players. He gets, you know, he gets a ton of work uh, throughout, uh, you know, routes on air and even in seven on seven, um, you know, where we were going full speed on all that stuff with some of the first group throughout the spring. So JJ has gotten a good acclimation uh, to, you know, what our offense is really all about. He's starting to show some ownership of it and growing every single day. It'll be a big week for him this week, uh, getting a few more uh, getting a few more reps before we uh, set him off into the summer before uh, arriving back here for a big training camp for our whole team and certainly for J.J. as he continues his development. But, Rich, I can just tell you um, everything so far we had hoped uh, to, to get out of J.J. from the spring, confirming a lot of the things we thought about him throughout the pre-draft process. Uh, he's done all those things and then some. Uh, he's been 
wearing wearing us out at the facilities, working his tail off, and and I think he's going to be in a great spot to continue his growth and development. You know, on a really good timeline. Sam Darnold's also had a really good spring, uh, getting acclimated to our offense. So uh, where we're at as a team right now, we feel really uh, fortunate to have the talented group around that quarterback position, both at the skill players uh, with Justin and. Uh, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson coming back and and adding Aaron Jones was huge for us to pair with Ty Chandler. And then I think our offensive line has really been solidified. Uh, you know, obviously with the two tackles we have, we bring back Dalton Reisner, who's going to compete like crazy a, at the guard spot with both Ed and uh, Blake Brendel. And then Garrett Bradbury has been Mr. Reliable for us, you know, in the middle. And anytime you're transitioning at the quarterback position to have a veteran center, um, to really kind of drive that communication and, and make sure we're all on the same page. Um, it's a good setup. I know uh, I wish uh, I, I wish I could have stepped in and got to play with the other 10 guys that our quarterbacks get to, and I think they feel the same way. Come on, I mean, wasn't Brady there when you got there, Kevin? Yeah, let's not get into details, Rich. Let's not get into details. <laughs> that's not important I mean, today. That's what we call, I guess, a roadblock <laughs> to getting time with the ones. Right. <laughs> you that, know. that would be, let's just say my first spring, Rich, I, I didn't get very many reps with the ones in, in New England. <laughs> well, and, and again, that's not an indication whether you like somebody or you're disappointed in somebody. I mean, there is a plan that you have to put into place. And in terms of that, like what, what do you, what does one do when one gets somebody like JJ McCarthy at his age but with a ton of experience and somebody used to winning and used to owning a team, right? Like how, how does one go about getting that person's feet wet comfortable enough for you to even consider having him as a starter in his first year? Yeah, Rich, I think first and foremost, our jobs is to make sure we create the best possible learning environment uh, every single day for for JJ and that's how we teach that's how we install the offense that's how we coach the the individual aspects of the quarterback position whether it's the run game the pass game uh, reading coverage technique fundamentals um, there really is a quarterback school uh, that kind of takes place for our offense and and what I think uh, is the best way to do it is to not completely forget everything that they've done up until this point I mean how many times can we apply principles that we saw on tape, we got to know JJ really well pre-draft. Hey, what are the areas where he's most comfortable? And then where are the areas where we want to make sure that he feels challenged on a daily basis? Because it's got to be the perfect uh, combination of really challenging him, exposing him uh, to some of the difficulties that will be out in front of him that he can then identify and go attack, while also making sure that we're uh, maintaining the confidence in a player that has a lot of it, and rightly so. The guy's won at every level he's ever been at. He's coming off a national championship and playing the quarterback position at a high level. So it's a good balance of both, um, knowing that it's still just as May and June as we work towards the end of this offseason program, and we're going to have a competitive training camp. Um, but we do have a plan for J.J., uh, a long-term plan. We see him uh, as our quarterback of the future, and, and when that – uh, ultimately starts with him taking game reps under center um, will really be, be about his process to getting there and, and demonstrating uh, that he's got total comfort uh, in the system. So then uh, the natural learning environment that is playing quarterback in the NFL, uh, we're not going to be able to control every aspect as control freaks, as coaches as we are. Yes. Uh, and it's good to expose him to some things as he grows and develops, but we want to make sure it's the right time and, and, and JJ's, um, you know, feels 100% confident that he can not only go in and have success, uh, but then also when adversity does hit, is he attacking it the right way from a foundation that hopefully we've built up uh, over a good amount of time that he can feel confident to go in and attack this thing for 17 plus. You also have a veteran sitting there, and not just any veteran, he doesn't have any gray in his beard. You know, he's from 2018's draft, third overall, looking for an opportunity to to – to do, I guess, in a way what Baker Mayfield did last year. And, and I'm wondering, what is your message to Sam Darnold uh, with with a kid like McCarthy sitting there? What what do you say to Sam, Kevin? Yeah, I, I think it started pre-draft. Uh, you know, just the communication with Sam of uh, when we brought him in here, uh, how confident and excited I am to coach a, a guy like Sam. I loved him coming out of the draft and, and, and just acknowledging the quarterback journey 
uh, that he's been on. And uh, we all as quarterbacks in this league, and I, and I use that term loosely for myself, nice. but um, we all, uh, you know, go on different quarterback journeys and we learn different things at different times. Um, and then you go from situation to situation uh, where hopefully you find one uh, that is conducive to you kind of putting all of that experience, even though he still is a young player, Rich, uh, he has experienced quite a lot, different offenses, different situations, different teams that he's been on. Uh, and my challenge to Sam uh, <laughs> really was one of just come in here every day and focus on uh, just getting a little bit better every day, a little bit more comfortable in the offense, uh, understanding that uh, we're going to put you in the best possible situation for you, for you to just go play, throw completions, move the team, and and try to generate some points. Um, and our offense with the skill players around, uh, who whoever's playing quarterback is set up to really just put the ball in play, make great decisions, and good things are going to happen uh, without feeling like you got to put the weight of the world on your shoulders, snap in and snap out. And that's, you know, where Sam's really had a great spring. He's done that. He's demonstrated that. And I think he's starting to feel uh, the rewards of that with the comfort and how he's playing um, with a little bit more consistency. And, and that's really going to be the name of the game is how many times can we go out there and have our quarterback uh, get us into the right play, uh, do their jobs from a technique fundamental standpoint, uh, where we want their eyes progression wise. And then uh, Sam is plenty talented to make every throw uh, that we ask our quarterbacks to make in this offense. So excited to see him hit the ground running in training camp and, and uh, you know, obviously be part of a competitive situation. But uh, I think Sam is off to a great start here this spring and expect him to do the same this fall. So then do you think, is, is it fair to say, Kevin, somebody from my position talking about this stuff every day, to say this is going to be given every opportunity for him to make this his team in 2024, go as far as he can take you, which is, who knows, it's obviously a very talented team and he's got an opportunity here, and then it's up to him to make any decision about when it's McCarthy's time difficult for you. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think just knowing that Sam's been there, done that, he's he's been a starting quarterback for a lot of games in this league. He's coming off of a year uh, where I do think he really grew uh, in San Francisco last year, whether it was being around Kyle, Brian Greasy, uh, Brock Purdy in the quarterback room, watching a guy essentially with a really talented team around him go out and not only, you know, distribute the ball and, um, you know, make a lot of plays, but put the team on his back at times, understand when he had to, you know, make some plays with his legs, create, you know, some plays off schedule, uh, make the plays that are there in rhythm and and good things are going to happen when you pair that with a, a balanced attack. And, and I think that was a real growth kind of learning year for Sam. And he's applying a lot of those things now and his opportunities. Look, we're going to have, like I said, a, a competitive camp where we give our guys an opportunity um, to, you know, both on the practice field and, and joint practice uh, and also in the games to, to really identify what that quarterback room is going to look like. But it is, you know, perfectly okay for guys to have individual improvement and development plans um, on different timelines in that quarterback room uh, because the most important thing is, is no matter who's in the game for us playing quarterback, we want them to be playing at a level that gives us a chance to win football games consistently. And we feel like we've put together a room not only with uh, Sam and, and bringing in JJ, who we're really excited about, but having a veteran uh, like Nick Mullins and, and another young guy in Jaron Hall that will all, you know, hopefully develop. And as we learned last year, we played four of them last year. So uh, it's it's one of those situations where you got to do everything in your can in you can to pour into those guys and develop your quarterback room as a whole. Uh, there's not always equal reps for everybody. It's about the work that they do on their own, but also, you know, how we mentally prepare those guys every single day. And in, you know, last one on your offense, uh, Kevin O'Connell, um, you got a running back who looks like he's on the Favre plan going from Green Bay and going to Minnesota to exact some revenge and division and then go as far as he can go in Aaron Jones, one of my favorites I've gotten to meet over the last few years. How jacked is he? What's going through his skull during these OTAs, Kevin? Yeah, he's uh, he's been awesome. You know, he's – a guy from obviously playing in the division for a couple years against him, but even going back before before these last two years, I've just always had such respect for how he plays the game. You can clearly see, um, you know, he earns on a minute-to-minute -minute daily basis 
uh, the the leadership role that he's had, you know, obviously in Green Bay, Green Bay, and being a part of a uh, a very successful team up there, or and and obviously when we get an opportunity to bring him here, um, Rich, it was something that uh, I quite honestly, it's one of those things you don't think is going to really be possible, mm. and then when it does happen, and you know you're adding a player like that, a person like that, to your team. Um, you know, as a coach, you can't ask for anything more than that. Talent, talented players with great skill sets that fit what you do, but also guys that are going to come in and uplift and, and make the whole outfit, the whole program better. Um, that's what Aaron Jones is. And he's been like that from day one since arriving here. And, and he hasn't had to do anything other than just be who he's always been, which has been a great teammate, super talented guy that that's going to have a lot of success in our system. Yeah, I'm sure he's circling week four at Green Bay on your schedule. Uh, last one for you, Coach O'Connell. The laboratory in your special teams room about this new kickoff rule. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm fascinated by it. Um, and my, my colleague Mike Florio from Pro Football talked the other day saying people aren't talking about it enough. What, what is your sense of how this is going to look, play out, be meaningful? What, what are your thoughts, Kevin? Well, I think it's definitely going to accomplish the goal of, of getting the kick return back in the game, um, which is which is what the ultimate intent was, um, which which I do agree with, and and to do it in a way where we can maybe limit um, some potential you know pitfalls injury wise that existed previously in the in in the kickoff return phase. Uh, but I can tell you, Rich, the you know throughout the spring when we line that thing up. And uh, you see, you know, all those players standing there five yards apart. And it definitely is going to be different. It's going to be different to the fan's eye uh, from the first time they see it to kick off the 2024 season. And then I think throughout the year, uh, just watching the different schematics, teams deploy, different personnel, um, you know, we're all kind of learning a little bit, trying to figure out schematically how you want to handle it uh, in each individual uh, team most likely, and and I think it is going to be different based upon the re the returner skill set, based upon the type of kicker you're playing, um, what type of kick variations can you have when you're you know sending your coverage unit down there to try to put stress, uh, you know, on that return unit landing that ball in the landing zone in different spots and different trajectories and all those things, and I think you are still going to see some teams that will choose just to you know, take the take the 30 yard line and try to boom it through just out of the sheer fact of the unknown, especially early on. But I think over the course of the season, um, we're going to see some high impact uh, plays on, you know, that really contribute to teams winning and losing based upon, you know, the fact that it's going to be a, a significant play back in the game. And it, it, nonetheless, even it, just if it's just a field position play, a quality return out of that thing, giving you a shorter field uh, changes the whole kind of narrative of not only that drive, but then the field position that works off of it throughout the rest of uh, that particular aspect of the game. So I think it's going to be exciting. I think uh, there's a lot of unknowns even for us right now as mm. we kind of navigate it. And I think that's okay. That's our jobs as coaches uh, to try to assess how we can most effectively uh, use our personnel, put together schemes that will hopefully give us a chance to generate some explosive returns and and, uh, you know, see if we can make it a, a real positive play, uh, both with how we, we, we return it, but then also making sure uh, we limit the explosive returns against us and allow our defense to play with a lot of grass behind them. Do you consider having somebody who's a good tackler learn how to kick off? Like, seriously, like, you, do you go to your defender saying, who can kick? Do you do that? I think, I think, uh, I know there's, you know, some teams out there that might have the personnel, you know, on their, uh, on their team already to maybe give that a try, but there's definitely uh, knowing that that ball might get to that kicker uh, maybe, you know, a few more times this season, it's definitely worth the conversation. Um, I don't, uh, I don't particularly know if we've had the open tryout yet. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> nice. I think, uh, I think it's nice. it's definitely definitely going to be worthy of of a conversation as you go because the yeah. you know every every advantage in something new like this uh, will matter and it could be one play here or there that that determines your whole season. We've seen it, uh, you know, even in two years as the head coach here going into my third year, I've already seen it take place in different phases, uh, you know, of a game. But you just never know uh, when that one or two plays will will have a huge impact on on what you ultimately end up being. 
uh, as a team for that season. Yeah, I imagine that one of your returners has got to be one of your fastest guys too, right? I, I would imagine one that can find that hole and just hit it and crease it. And then you're out the gate. Yeah, you, you against yeah everything's going to happen fast. I think it's going to be a combination of, uh, you know, speed to hit, you know, whatever uh, crease gets formed in the, in the return. But I think just the differences in uh, the blocking schemes, the, you right. know, I think it could resemble – uh, different aspects of offensive run plays with different types of uh, schemes, you know, pulling people, gap schemes, um, trying to basically, you know, develop angles and leverages however you can based upon everybody having the same starting point uh, in the confines of the rules. I think you're going to see different people uh, put some different skill sets out there, maybe bigger bodies, maybe, uh, you know, more blocking types that that don't have to have to worry anymore about, uh, the t the the distance of covering or uh, the distance of that return unit, um, you know, having to uh, cover so much ground anymore. So I think you can play around with different body types and really try to figure out what works for your individual roster uh, to maximize the play. And, I, and like I said, I think it's going to be exciting. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how our guys kind of handle that phase. And, and as always, there's uh, no greater time for a, uh, an offensive or defensive minded head coach in the kicking game. That's so important than, uh, that then people realize just uh, not just the kickoff kickoff return, but the punt and punt return phase, uh, those hidden yardages in a game, hidden points in games uh, that you don't always remember the day after, but you look at, you look back on and know the critical factors that played into the game. Uh, this is definitely going to be one of them. It's new, it's different, it's exciting. I think it's going to be great for our game. Kevin O'Connell, you are the man. Thank you for the 20 minutes um, at the uh, final OTAs of your summer. And then we'll chat again real soon, Kevin. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks again. That's Kevin O'Connell, the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.